really, it's one of the great ironies of Hollywood that uh, an executive like me is introduced as a Hollywood legend. Now. <laughs> when my greatest achievement is to have the privilege to uh, introduce someone who's truly earned that, you know, that description. Uh, so I, I thank you for that privilege. I also am grateful, very grateful for the nomination uh, tonight, and I'm also grateful that I was nominated in a field of people where I had absolutely no chance of winning. So I didn't have to worry about doing a whole speech and everything. So I took one look at that list and I said, okay, I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, but uh, Olympia Dukakis is a legend in every sense of the word, from her earliest days as a brilliant young stage actress to her many acclaimed performances throughout her career. She's an icon to actors and directors and writers and producers and anyone who works in or aspires to a career in entertainment. Everyone in Hollywood admires her, not just for her enormous talent, but for her intelligence, her, her strength, her courage, her wit, and that amazingly cool demeanor that makes you want to get to be her best friend as soon as she gets off the stage. She's also a legend to her family and friends and the many social and cultural endeavors that she works on so tirelessly. And of course she's a Greek, which is the icing on the cake, and particularly tonight, and it's a good thing because until tonight there wasn't an award in any part of the stage or screen that she wasn't nominated for or won at some point in her career, including of course the Oscar for Moonstruck, but also numerous Golden Globes and Emmys and BAFTAs and you name it, Critics Award. So it's fitting that we now have the Gabbies to celebrate her Hellenism, as well as her many achievements. You know, my, my um, sorry, my mother um, always uh, watched the credits of films uh, to look for the Greeks, and, and I still do, and my wife still does, and now our kids still do. Sometimes it was the actor or the director, sometimes it was the stunt guy or the sound mixer, sometimes it was the caterer. <laughs> Actually, a lot of times it was the cater. But there was always a Greek, and we always looked for the Greek. But when she couldn't find one, she would sometimes try and adapt some of the names. So, so she would see George Colon, and she would say, oh, that's Kolonakis, I bet he changed it. That sounds Latin, Mom, no, it's Kolonakis. One of her favorites was George Lucas. She was absolutely sure George Lucas was Greek. She said, look at that hair. She's a Greek. What a fatza. That's a Greek. And, and I had, so, and many years later, I got to know George. And so finally, a relentless mom, I, okay, so I asked him. I said, George, by the way, he said, no, why did you ask? I said, well, no, nah, it's my mom. It's a long story. <laughs> he said, no, I think somebody's Lithuanian, but I grew up around here. I was born in Northern California. But the point of all of that is that with Olympia, there was never any doubt. And we were always, always proud, and, and Greeks are always proud of each other's accomplishments. And, and of course, nothing uh, is more proud um, than Greeks' parents. Greek parents are always proud of their children, whatever their achievements. But then there's the Dukakis family, and they had more to work with and to talk about in the Gaffineos of Lowell, Massachusetts, than most uh, Greek parents. You may not know that in the same year that Olympia won her Academy Award, her brother, Michael, came very close to being elected president of the United States. You think about that, the Greek parents' pride. And of course, I felt Michael should have won, and certainly that he was a better candidate. Well, I thought that until I got to know Olympia, and then I thought maybe they should have gone with the other Dukaki. Because one thing got Michael in a little trouble, he had this bad photo op where he was in this tank and they put a helmet on him, and the press, um, made him look silly in this photo. And I, I thought about Olympia. See, that would never have happened with Olympia. She'd have been in the tank, and they'd have brought this thing over, this helmet, and she would have said, that's not working. Where's wardrobe? And what are all these guys doing over here? These guys need to be over here. She would have choreographed it, reworked the whole set, and she would have ended up looking like George Patton and been elected president of the United <laughs> States, the first Greek president. It's all right. There's always time, Olympia, and you'll always have our vote. Uh, whatever you do. Um, so tonight we celebrate a true legend and for a glimpse into the magic she's created over the years, let's have a look at the work of Olympia Dukakis.
gonna love bite on your neck. He's coming back this morning. What's the matter with you? Your life's going down the toilet. Cover up that damn thing. Come on, put some makeup on. Come on. It's nice to meet you. Got a love bite on your neck. Your mother's recovered from death. Oh, good. It's a Greek thing. She is like Hera. She is Hera. Zeus, you know, is out there, but, you know, she is the power. She's the tempest. A teacher has two jobs. Fill young minds with knowledge, yes, but more important, give those minds a compass so that that knowledge doesn't go to waste. Now, I don't know what you're doing with the knowledge, Mr. Holland, but it's a compass. You're stuck. Because my name was Olympia Dukakis, the agent said to me, but you have to change your name. So it was uh, really important to me to prove to them, not that I was as good as they were, but that I was better. Mona is my daughter. She always said that her mother lived there. I'm not her mother. I'm her father. Acting made it possible for me to experience aspects of myself that were dangerous to experience in life because I had no way of containing it in life. It's a joke, Doris. That was a joke, that wasn't a joke. A joke is a punchline. And a punchline. The punchline is funny. That wasn't funny. You have no sense of humor. I have a sense of humor. What I don't have is a menu. If Penny Youngman had you for an audience, you would have never got past go. If Roseanne had you for a weight, it should be a size two. Please, this is your chance to do something for your fellow man. I'm not your wife, I'm not I look for something I haven't done before. I do look for that. I don't want to do the same thing over and over again. You know what they say? That which does not kill us makes us stronger. This is the third time in six months I had a place here. Our convent was actually made of cow dung. I was the only one who failed to find cow dung romantic. You have the purest heart of any child I've ever known. You know, Leo, sometimes you can be a real asshole. She has it, and if anybody's going to speak for the woman that's over like 40, this is the woman you want. I think everybody relates to her. She's everybody's sister, everybody's mother. You're a dear. Seven times I tried. Seven times, young lady. So what? No TV for a week? Then I phoned the office, but apparently this big shot was too busy to call her mother back. Well, you know what, Mama? I'm here now, and I'm fine. Well, I'm not. And I want to know where you were this morning. I have a right to know. No, you do not have a right. You have no right, Mother. I'm 28 years old. Give me that. I'm 54. I'm going to be dead soon. <sighs> she's like an Athena, you know? She's just, uh, she's a goddess. <laughs> in the true sense of the word. I really uh, admire her, you know, for, for all of those reasons, because I, I want to peek in her window and see what she's doing during the winter solstice, you know. I guess you didn't let me in. No, you don't. No, I think the house is empty. I can't invite you in because I'm there. Because I know who I am. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a great legend and a great goddess, Olympia Dukakis.